Sorry guys, there was a little pause in there. That's uh, part two of the video now. So yeah, I'm gonna cut this video into two pieces because this game is just too awesome not to do this. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Wait, what? What do you say? Then? Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, oh, shit. hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Oh shit. Oh, it's ruined. You I can't believe after everything we talked about that you my story. You've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It well it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? Oh, I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I'll be right back, guys. I'm just gonna... Turn on some lights because it's getting darker. And uh, yeah. Oh, I'm just gonna turn this on. Hopefully it's enough. This enough? It's enough. Okay. This back on. Let's continue the game. I have to shut the game down. I have to. No, no. You don't. I have no, to. No, no, don't. Oh, Stanley! Fuck! thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? No. That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so oh, hard on it. it. I tried so hard. The fuck? Just behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, that's so tempting. But yeah, let's try to do what he says this time. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, oh, Stanley shit. walked upstairs to his boss's office. <laughs> we 
looks different. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. What? Am I supposed to say something? Night shark something something. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. There's no fucking working? Night Shark I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. I Otherwise can't. Otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Okay, fine, you're not gonna do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, you. only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do, who, who, I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. That's me. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need yeah. you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. Okay, so... Uh, the story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. That it cannot exist without you. Do you understand? The end of this, uh, Whatever choice you make is just fine. And both correct. Thing. You can't be wrong here. We can work together. Uh, I'll accept whatever you do. I I'm actually going to try to follow these directions forward, like please. one more time. Choose. So just uh, let's begin the game again. And this time I'm actually going to follow all of his directions. Just to see what it leads me to. <laughs> But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. Oh, okay, let's begin the game again. Uh, that was weird. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. 
That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Exactly as it says. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Oh, that's so... Cause like uh, I didn't choose that. That's like if I make a choice and I go the other way. It was like the phone. Five. Four twenty seven. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. And 
And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Stanley's a hero. What happened? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine, I won. unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, yeah. even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. All of his co-workers were... Wait. Okay. So, guys, that concludes the two-part videos that I just made about Stanley the Parable. It's a very nice game. I'm so sorry if I spoiled it for you. Well, uh, if you didn't know the game before, then you probably shouldn't be watching this because it's a huge spoiler. But I hope you guys enjoyed this two-part video. I sure enjoyed making it. Uh, it's a very nice game. Uh, I highly recommend you guys downloading it. And yeah, see you next time. If he's not asking too much, please leave a like, subscribe, and as always, have a nice day. Ready, aim, fire.